I've done is uh, I've cleaned this surface area here um, and I, I took this piston out cleaned this got it back made sure it's still working freely and it is but I do have a little bit of an issue right here with this where it's kind of binding it's it, it turns to there and it turns to there but I feel a bind right in there just a little bit and I think it's some carbon right in here and I'm gonna clean this just a little bit because what's happening when I when I set this on here and try to turn it see it it turns one way and then I can't turn it back I have to take it off and push it back back to about the middle and then I can do it and I don't know if that's normal it may be because it may not move but that far right there I don't know how far it moves inside the, the unit but if I go all the way around I can't get it all the way back I can tell you that so anyway I'm gonna clean the carbon off of that anyway and see what happens so um, I'm just gonna kind of scrape this out a little with a screwdriver and then I'm gonna take a, my small uh, wire brush to clean the heavy stuff out Blow the build up. That was look pretty grunt grunchy in there. I don't know if that's a problem, but it, it sure was binding pretty steadily there with all that build up right there. Anyway, we'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm really not finding a whole lot wrong with this turbocharger except for it is kind of dirty. And I've cleaned it up real good, so we'll see what happens. Use a wire brush in here. Get all this heavy stuff cleaned out. moving a little easier without that carbon build up in there. some of the trouble right there and things moving real free now so I don't know we'll see snap on man would appreciate me using my screwdriver for Scraper, scraper, too, sure. So. pretty good right there now. It's moving pretty freely now. I hadn't actually put this ring back on here to see if it's working any freer, but I guess it could. Let's see. I still can't bring it back from one point there. I mean, it's, I think it's, I think the thing must just turn a certain distance. As long as it turns right in that distance there, we're okay. So, we'll, we'll reassemble it and see what happens. Make sure it works. <clears throat> now I'm going to take an anti seize compound, put a little between each one of these little areas here. 
uh, I realized the Ford manual says not to use anti-seize compound, but when I watch all the videos on YouTube, every video of every person that's doing these is using anti-seize compound. So, you know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Putting around all those pentels. And you'll notice what I've cleaned here is I didn't worry about cleaning this area or this area because that's where it's, but I did clean this top area and this bottom area right here on both of these. And I'm going to put them back on here now like this. Reassemble all these. Okay, now we've got all of these placed in here and I've got this ring that we have to put on which was over here. And I'm going to put a little bit of compound. Actually, I think I'm just going to dabble a little on top of all of these like this. I don't want to just paint the whole thing, so we'll just put put some on these. Again, I know the Ford says not to use it, but then you know, everybody's using it, so I don't know what's the deal. Let's just let's just use it. Any sees compound is just that. Any sees compound. Now we're ready for this to go. You can see it goes like this because. They've got to turn the, as it turns to the right, it's got to turn those plates in. So it's got to go this way. And I made a little X mark right here on my housing. You can do this several different ways, but I think this pin hole right here is exactly 90 degrees off from it. But, but what I did is I put, I lined it up so that it lines up right with the mark, which is right there. And I know that's where it goes, but then we have to line up all these pentel uh, sets, which I think I'm going to be doing that upside down. And yes, I am. All right, let's kind of go right like that. No, I don't think do that. It's got to go like that. And there's no way to put it together backwards from what I can see. So, biggest thing is getting all these lined back up to where they will adjust and this takes time this is a little bit annoying doing this part of it but you gotta get all these little notches and all these little holes at the same time okay now I've got it all lined up got it all assembled and you see that it moves really freely now before, when I would do this right here, it would hang and hang and hang and hang. It would, it would not move freely. It's getting a lot of carbon buildup in there in the housing, so it would make it kind of hard to, to reassemble it. So I got that back together now. Uh, now the idea is to put this on here, and you have to turn it over and line this little pencil here up with that slot right there, and that little notch right there with this little notch right here, if you can see that right there. And the way they tell you on the video is to, to line this up with this first and then get it in there and then turn it until it until it clicks into that notch. And that way you can get it you know, where you need it. So so uh, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to take a rag and kind of wipe it off a little bit. Uh, probably needs a little bit of anti-seize right on the top. I think I'll just put a little bit right in here these areas here where it's going to move. Just kind of paint a little on there, not much. Any seize compound is really nothing but a lubricant that is real high temp heat resistant. And it kind of, you know, it lubricates stuff that's going to be really, really hot. You know, and that's, you put it around spark plug, plug, plugs too, you know, the same way. So, anyway. All right, now let's see how this goes. We will set this housing on here now. Put this clamp on here first. Clamp needs to be out of the way of those two things there, so I think I'll turn it like that, kind of in the upward direction. Let's see, let me think where that goes. Those go to the bottom. And I think that's going to be right right there. Be out of the way. 
right. now I flip this housing over and I need to get down here so I can see this because I want to line up that petal first to get down here a little bit lower that's how I get to it This uh, strap is being in my way here, but I need to be able to see what I'm doing, so I'm going to turn it so I can see in that opening right there. There it is. And then you just turn this housing until she lines it with that other notch. There it went, right there. Just went right in place. Got it. All right, and it's together and then we'll tighten the clamp here in just a few minutes okay now we've got the clamp back on and I've reassembled the turbo and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this little piston out on my back side not many people do this but I'm going to take it out just to uh, uh, just to make sure that my turbocharger is actually actuating and I can see it I can actually pull this uh, pull this piston out right here uh, it's a little bit easier to get out with a Pry, prying component. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'll take a pair of, I think some people take a magnet, but you can do that. Stick a magnet on this and it should move it, but I, I ain't having much luck with a magnet. I've seen that on the video, but it's not, not wanting to hold it and do it. But maybe it needs to move easier than that. I don't know. It ain't moving. I've got a problem here. Hmm. That's unusual. Hmm. We've definitely got a problem here. I can't get the piston to move in and out. I'm not doing that. Uh-oh. Something's wrong. We'll have to disassemble it again. Something's not right. Okay, now we've reassembled it. And we're moving this down to see if it's up in the hole. The uh, turbocharger moving now. I need a piston in the mouth. I don't know if I had it in a bind before or what. It must have been kind of bound up or something. I don't have the clamp tied yet. I'm going to tie the clamp in just a minute and see how it does. So let's do that now. See if any kind of issues occur when I tighten the clamp. Make sure I get it turned right. It's turned exactly where it needs to be. I'm going to put a little bit of tighten on here. Not much. Snug it down and I'm going to take the mallet and kind of. tap down on it because I want to make sure it's snug where it's supposed to be. Okay. Now before I torque it down, I want to make sure that it's still turning like it's supposed to. Again, make sure it didn't get the binding again. Happened, but we'll make sure it's not bound anyway. And it's not, it's moving freely still. It's still moving freely. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I maybe got something turned wrong or what. She's moving freely now. The piston is in and out. And we're good to go. And now we'll torque this down to 12 to 13 foot pounds and we'll be ready to go.